So this one is a cool opportunity. We're going to start working with numbers. There's a couple coming up, I think. There's one that's a percentage parser. We'll get there. But this one is implementing a type called absolute, and that type takes in a string, uh, which is like a, a, a number, a string or a number or a big int, sorry. And the output should be a positive number string. So for example, we pass in negative 100, and we give it to absolute, and what we get back is the string 100. Make sense? So we have a couple test cases yeah. here. We can kind of, we can consult them as we go along, but certainly we need to start with a generic. Um, what do you think? Where would you start with something like this? Um, so this is also, it's also working with strings. Not yep, it also numbers. should work for strings. So it, probably it's good to, here, I'll help out and we'll put the, just like are in the instructions. Um, I think this is in the, yeah. um, if, if you do the type challenges just canonically, I've modified them just a little bit to make the tests a little easier to read so you can hover over them. But I think it actually gives you this constraint when you start it usually. So yeah, T extends right. number or string or big int. Um, and we're describing the absolute. Um, I genuinely don't know where to start with this. So okay, there's a there's a trick. Um, let me let me show you. So you can do this. Up until now, we've only been putting like t extends. We've only been doing stuff kind of like that. But you can actually do something yeah. a little more fancy. You can do this kind of thing. Uh, well, you tell me what does this look like? It does to you. Uh, converts it to a string. Right, exactly. So you can do this kind of craziness inside the type system. You can convert it to a string. This is the true branch and this is the false branch. And then in here, we can start to try to detect whether it's a negative number or not. Oh, okay, yeah, you can grab the, you can just do that. Oh. Yes. Well, maybe not number, but yeah, whatever you. Not. But yeah, you. whatever. <laughs> and then this would just be you. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. did it, is there a syntax error? Right. Wait, you cannot find name you. What? Oh, we have to say infer. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm like looking at it. Okay, great. Yes, and some of them now pass. So let's check out this one. This one does not. Uh, A10 does not pass. It's false. So. Um, the negative ones are passing, but none of the positive ones. That's what it looks like. Yeah, uh, right. If it doesn't extend that, then we just return. T. You got it. Yeah, I was I was waiting for you to just put in a T here, which will fail uh, fail some other cases <laughs> like big int and whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's well, it. Because no, uh, all of these are expecting a string output. Yes, it output, always expects a string. Be either, yeah. The, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, totally. What if, what if what if this um, needed a number output like like that? Uh, I think you would just I think you would just be able to do number. something like that. But I'm not sure. I guess you would have to convert it back to a number somehow. I don't know how yeah. we could convert it back to a number because you need to do the the string part in order to do like to grab the the negative sign and to do the inferencing. Um, yeah. There, there's there's an conversion. issue. We're gonna actually we're gonna get to it in a little bit. There's a there's an issue at the very end of our little set tonight for grabbing the integer value, and that one gets really complicated because we have decimal points to deal with as well as the negative. It's it's a little bit much. And I was looking at an example. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about it in that video, I think. But there's an example I saw online. Maybe I can find it and link it below. And it's from Anders Hausberg, the creator of or sort of designer of TypeScript, you could say, and he explains why it works the way it does and, you know, what the pitfalls would be if it didn't. But yeah, basically that's how it works. Um, I did find some other solutions for this. Let me show. It's pretty much the same thing, but it, it kind of accomplishes it in a slightly different way. So this is saying if T extends, if T is a string outright, then just 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 pass it in uh, if t is not a string sorry if t is not a string then we need to convert it and this is how it converts it and then it passes it back through otherwise the rest of this stuff inside is, is the same 
it's always a good idea when you're doing stuff like this to just remove things at the end after you've found the solution and see if you can make it work, if you know what I mean. Um, so the way that we could make this one work, of course, just to, I mean, it is going to be the same now as what we just did. Oh, can I type? But yeah, this will, mm, did I do it right? Rest, you, mm -hmm -hmm. absolute, why is this failing? What? In That's because the T doesn't get converted to a string. Oh, That's right, 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 yeah. Problem. So, yeah, because T, yeah, it, it could fail if the, yeah, it would get to this branch. Got it. So, anywho, that's just another kind of approach, but pretty much the same. Cool, right? Insane. Yeah. I like this one. Yeah, this is nice. All right. It's, a, it's interesting you convert from number to string, but not string to number. There, there might be a way. I don't know. Again, if somebody knows, yeah. comment down below. I would really genuinely love to see how that actually works.